she kicked open the doors for virtual women everywhere. <laughs> Someone asked me who Laura Croft is. I'd have to say that she's the infamous female adventurer. And broke every rule. For them to have a female character was something very, very different. And people said we were mad. I mean, there was very heated discussions. Real life legends wanted a piece of her. Bono called us. He wants to have Laura Croft in the Pop Mark tour. And she became every boy's fantasy. My mom is very worried. I haven't had a date in a long, long time. Laura Croft is very, very real to me. Uh, my friends say she's too real. Her beauty caused a backlash. She's unproportioned. That's not natural. You know, physics aren't, it doesn't work like that. While her adventures inspired millions. Laura is a fantasy. She is what everybody wants to be, boy or girl. She represents an Indiana Jones type character where you can go out and find something, hunt it down, take care of the baddies, and then prevail over evil. This is the story of a sexy, kick-ass character who became a virtual goddess. Prepare yourself for Lara Croft. Don't you think you've seen enough? In 1988, the world of video games is pretty limited. For the most part, there were very rigid genres. There was fighting genres, there was role-playing games, sports games, and driving games. Confident he could make better games, Jeremy Smith, a 27-year-old computer salesman, uses an inheritance to start his own game development company. His kid brother soon joins the ride. People would come to Core Design with a concept or, or a game idea. So for a good four years, we were developing games, some of the old classics, Rick Dangerous and things that sort of went out and that we developed, but not under Core Design name. After years of developing, the brothers decide to come up with some concepts of their own. They release Thunderhawk and a few other successful titles. And by the mid-1990s, the Red Hot Core Design is adopted by gaming giant IDOS Interactive. And just in time, because the brothers are preparing to drop a bombshell on the entire video game industry. We sort of still have to wake ourselves up and pinch ourselves that we, you know, very sort of uh, created this character. This character comes from a brand new concept. For the most part, the landscape of gaming was more of the same, meaning it was more of what people had been accustomed to from the Nintendo Super System and the Sega Genesis. People keep forgetting this is the one that established 3D character-based action adventure. This is it. There were lots of what we'd call first-person character games around where, you know, you just the eyes of the character, you don't actually see the body of the character. And we really wanted to move it to the next level. And where will this new character live? And we had this idea that we wanted to be a sort of a, an adventurer and we go to these strange, bizarre places in the world, but so let's do it through a video game. And this new adventurer, what would he be like? And we wrote down things like we wanted the, the character to have a, an agility, a coyness. We wanted people to relate to the character. We wanted them to be vulnerable. We didn't want the character to be sort of a, a muscle-bound superhero. The closed minds began to open. And when we wrote all it down, it actually was a woman. The idea of having a woman play the lead character in an action game stirs controversy. We were very conscious that up until then, 95% of the game playing public, you know, sort of seven years ago were male. Um, and for them to have a female character was very, something very, very different. And people said we were mad. I mean, there was very heated discussions. Very revolutionary. And it was extremely risky at the time. Nobody realized um, what the impact would be on the game. A young graphic artist at CORE is given the lucky assignment of creating this female heroine. Keep in mind, the person who created Laura Croft was an 18-year-old boy from England. And like any 18-year-old boy, he has some images of, of women that, you know, pop up in his mind. And those looks are raising eyebrows, questions, and much, much more. And I get asked the question a lot, you know, proportionally, why does she look like she looks? It's done for, for a reason, and that reason being that, you know, proportionally she's drawn like that so that actually people notice her features. And boy, do they notice. 
if we made her waist a little bit larger, she just looks like a cylinder. She looks like, you know, you, you don't notice anything. But this babe is more than just a smoking body. <sighs> This character being a sort of a, a gymnast, an athlete, that was something that we wrote down on this paper. We wanted this person to be able to jump large gaps. We wanted to have that fluidity and, and, and slinkiness, really, in how she moved. Every hot-bodied virtual female ass-kicker needs a good name. How about Laura Cruz? We thought it'd be far more attractive for the American people to pay an English character as opposed to an American character. So we changed the name to Lara Croft. We thought Croft was very sort of upper crust British. Lara Croft is an heiress who turns her back on high society to explore archaeological finds across the world. The game, named Tomb Raider, offers a beautiful character set in a world of true 3D thrill. <laughs> Suddenly, people could be in that room and they could look around, whereas before it'd just be purely a 2D game which moved left and right of the screen. And it blends action and adventure like never before. You have these true 3D environments. You have a character that you can maneuver and control. It's time to debut the voluptuous heroine. We went to the Consumer Electronics Show and we displayed it, and the buzz was amazing. Literally, the game took off and it was just throngs of people in front of it. Tomb Raider is released on PC, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation in late 1996. Lara Croft sets out on her first adventure to find the Scion, a treasured artifact from Atlantis. The game creates its own category. It wasn't just fighting, it wasn't just role-playing game, it was all those together and formed a new genre, action adventure. Core was successful in being able to not only position the camera behind Laura Croft as she runs to give these beautiful panoramic cinematic views. And those panoramic views of 15 massive 3D levels, as well as the smashing gameplay, propel sales. Laura's natural assets aren't overlooked either. When you go to see films, you don't see crusty old grandmas in the lead roles. You see beautiful people. In this case, Laura Croft's a female, so why not make her literally and figuratively bigger than life? But it's her ass-kicking mentality that really turns gamers on. She you just <gasps> takes <gasps> no Howdy. crap, for lack of a better word, from males. Hey. She's in there to win it. She basically enters every situation to come out on top. So make some room, boys, because Laura Croft has arrived. I remember going to the local store and seeing people walking out with the game and queuing to buy the game, and I was just standing there thinking, this is so bizarre. Tomb Raider sells more than one million copies in less than four months. She was kind of a bigger-than-life force. She really drove with the boat, actually. We just kind of hopped on and went along for the ride. But every good character needs a good nemesis. There was a site that was strictly set up to essentially exploit Laura. <laughs> By January 1997, Laura Croft, the tough and sexy heroine of the Tomb Raider video game, has battled her way through controversy to find a spot at the top of the sales charts worldwide. It was even more of a, of a phenomenon in the European continent. I mean, it crossed the European continent. It, in fact, Tomb Raider is a bigger deal in Europe than it is in the U.S. We knew at some point in development we'd got something special and different because there was so much interest into the game. But, you know, we were incredibly naive. Lara is an unexpected breakthrough. We were way undersupplied at the time. It took us forever to get back into stock. Uh, we just didn't know what the uh, consumer was going to demand on this. The buxom babe is leading a revolution. The environments were so real. They are also exotic. Laura Croft's been called Indiana Jane, the female equivalent of James Bond, and she very much is that. Tomb Raider goes on to sell more than 4 million copies, and its star appears on more than 40 magazine covers worldwide. Fans and her creators aren't crazy about her. People 
ask questions about her like she's real. They want to know where she is, where does she take vacations, where does she go away, what does she do in her spare time. My mom is very worried. I haven't had a date in a long, long time. Laura Croft is very, very real to me. Uh, my friends say she's too real. Since Laura's busy exploring the depths of the world and stuck inside her virtual environments, each year a lovely lass is chosen to represent her at special events. We have a little entourage that she travels with. It includes two makeup artists, a handler, if you will, and two bodyguards, because she really is swarmed at the show, and now people look forward to it. But some of the real-life Lauras cause real-life problems. Rona, she just started saying that she was Laura Croft. And Laura wouldn't do that. Laura wouldn't open an a EB store in, in Derby, England. And it's like, well, yes, she is. You're Laura Croft. We're paying you. Get your ass up there and open up that store. So, you know, but she still was the best. Noah McAndrews was a fantastic model until we found out one day when a Playboy showed up on my desk with her on the cover, which was at first exciting, but then when you went and saw the pictorial, that's something Laura Clough would never do. Or would she? There was a site that was strictly set up to essentially exploit Laura and to show her naked. That was not how we wanted our image portrayed, really our corporate icon portrayed. And, um, so we went after them with a vengeance, and we shut it down. Core Design is given a tough assignment by parent company IDOS. Deliver the next Laura game in time for Christmas 1997. And almost everybody expected a second game, which was strange to us because we never even thought about doing one. What IDOS did was go back to Core and say, look, we've had this success. We've got to figure out a way that we can get this game year in and year out. We actually developed it over about a nine-month period, which was madness Ooh. in hindsight. This time, Laura is teamed with a powerful partner. Well, right after Tomb Raider 1, we then signed in our exclusive agreement with Sony. And, you know, Laura became sort of an icon that was very much associated with, with Sony and with the PlayStation 1. For the core design team, making another Tomb Raider gives them a chance to take care of some unfinished business. There was so much that sort of ended up written on that sheet of paper that was there through the development that we didn't make it into this game. For the first time, the mystery behind Laura's missing locks in game one is revealed. We had the ponytail in through all the development of the original game, and we, we just couldn't get it to work properly. It just would, would come through a body, go through a backpack. Miraculously went from having this long, lovely ponytail to sort of having a bob. Tomb Raider 2 is ready for the 1997 Christmas rush. They wanted her to have more purposeful sort of missions to be fighting against something. In the new game, Laura races from Tibet to Venice to keep the Dagger of Xi'an, an ancient icon possessing great powers, from falling into the wrong hands. Her motivation was the challenge. Very, very, I liked to Indiana Jones. It wasn't financial, it was none of that. You know, we, we always said she was very financially well off from her background, from her breeding. So her challenge and her motivation was really the, the buzz of the experience. Along the way, she must battle sharks, eels, killer dobermans, warrior monks, and crazed cult members. And Laura is the only character that could sort of save the world. With the new game comes a new wardrobe. We'd said, look, she's, she's been to all these exotic locations in the world, and suddenly she's going to go into the ice, and she can't have a little shorts, bless her, she's going to freeze. So uh, we looked at, you know, the bomber jacket and, and different things that we could dress her in, but that were still in character. Laura's modes of transportation. Laura in a boat driving around Venice was, was so great for us to do. And technological advances refine the beauty's features. So Laura physically, you know, she went from having sort of, um, I, I can't remember the exact number, but 180 sort of polygons, things that make her up to maybe 200, so suddenly she became a little bit smoother. The extra polygons enhance Laura in more ways than one. IDOS releases her measurements as 38, 24, 34. This causes an uproar. She's unproportioned, that's not natural. You know, physics aren't, it doesn't work like that. We never intended to be sexist, and I hope we never came across as sexist. This was a character that we created and loved. I mean, we love Laura. And fans love Laura's new look and the new game. 
With smoother gameplay and more complex puzzles, Tomb Raider 2 sells more than 2 million copies, only weeks after its release on PC and PlayStation in November 1998. It's that horrible word, and it's, it's that must-have. It was a must-have game, people that had PlayStation, and it became their lives. These people, I know people that took weeks off work and sat in a room in a dark room and played Tomb Raider. Other video game companies now have their own babe-like characters. Laura seems to have proven that girl power is dollar power, and that she is the reigning queen of video games. There are Laura Croft books, and plans are announced for a live-action movie featuring Laura's character. And the animated actress is invited on tour with one of the world's most popular bands. It's you two on the phone, it's like, <laughs> yeah, wow, you know. I thought it was a joke when I got an email from Adrian Smith at CORE saying, Bono called us, he wants to have Laura Croft in the Pop Mark tour. You know, Paul, it's the tour with the huge video screens, they want to have Laura Croft on there. It was just like, you know, Christ, these are huge, huge, huge megastars, and they'd like to use Laura, it's such, a, such an honor, really. Laura's Invincible. In November 1998, Tomb Raider 3, Adventures of Laura Croft, is released. Tomb Raider 3 had a lot of suggestions from gameplay that we took from the gamers and the folks from Core, you know, digested them and picked the ones that made sense and actually put them in there. Laura's new quest has her searching for an ancient meteor that possesses life-giving powers, set in five dazzling new locations, like India, Antarctica, and England. Her look, she was further developed. She had more outfits. She became a little bit slinkier in, in her movement. We sort of reanimated, we reinvented it almost. We sort of re-looked at all of the moves that she'd had and, and changed them all. Let's meet the new, more limber Laura. We introduced elements that we've never had before, crawling. We sort of went a lot more on the climbing element of it and the monkey swing element of it. New vehicles. <laughs> and even more evil enemies. Initial sales are promising, but for the first time, reviews are less than glowing. You know, for me, uh, as, a, as a consumer and player of the game, as well as obviously being responsible for it, I think the third was probably our weakest. Your perception is bad. I don't know about that. <laughs> Laura's fans were disappointed, but nothing could prepare them for what would come next. Don't you think you've seen enough? By January 1999, the Lara Croft video game franchise is a gold mine. Lara Croft launched IDOS literally in 96, and we, we rode on the back of Lara to where in 1999, we were literally the fastest growing stock on the NASDAQ, the fastest growing company, mid-sized company in the world. Our stock went from something like nine to 109 in less than a year. Laura is a fantasy. She is what everybody wants to be, boy or girl. She represents, in a way, uh, an Indiana Jones type character where you can go out and find something, hunt it down, take care of the baddies, and then prevail over evil. IDOS stock is soaring thanks to strong Christmas 1998 sales of Tomb Raider 3. Soon after, however, sales of the new game begin to slow. We created very large environments, um, and we didn't guide them through enough. I think in hindsight, when we look back now, we, we gave them a key and we said, ha, go and find where you use this key. We didn't tell them, and they'd have that key for hours, and they couldn't find where to use it, and it be almost became frustrating. So when Tomb Raider 3 came out, how are you going to be able to continue those rates of sale with other games. Uh, so we purchased companies or we put other games in development, um, but nothing had the same impact as Tomb Raider. So you go back to core and say, well, we need Tomb Raider 4 now. Tomb Raider The Last Revelation is released for Christmas 1999, but Laura's fans are more than frustrated by the fourth game. I don't think anybody was happy with the game, at the end of the day, we felt our results could have been better. We were asking way too much of the team, expecting them to be able to put these types of games out year on year on year. We said, look, we've been everywhere. We've been into London, we've been into sewers. Let's get back to Tomb Raider. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to where we started. 
But for Laura, going back to her roots will be her last adventure. She finally meets her match in an Egyptian tomb. So we came up with the idea of, of killing her off. Quickly, girl, before it collapses around you. <laughs> we also thought we'd get a holiday if she wasn't around. We always thought that the consumers never believed for one moment we're going to kill Lara. But it gave us a clean slate. Although sales for the shocking sequel don't reach earlier records, Lara's fans do show up to bid her a final farewell. Everybody can say, well, it wasn't that great a game, but then you look at Tomb Raider 4 and it still sold multiple millions of units. So it couldn't have been that bad. You know, the end of The Last Revelation was an important sort of milestone for us because that meant that the next generation games were being developed and being worked on. For years, the debate has raged over which actress will play Lara in the long-anticipated feature film. And the winner is... What was the most gratifying part for me is seeing Angelina Jolie portray those exact same qualities. You know, Angelina herself is like that, from what I've heard, but she certainly portrayed Laura Croft in that way, that she was a, kind of a take-no-prisoners gal, and that's Laura Croft. In a pleasant surprise for fans, Laura rises from the dead in December of 2000 for the release of her next game, Tomb Raider Chronicles. We had sort of no intention of doing the fifth game, but it, it sort of meshed in with the development process and, and we sort of had two teams, one team that were very focused on, on next generation at that point. Um, we had this idea, there were a few loose ends we wanted to, to tidy up. To the study, gentlemen, where we may pontificate over the day's disheartening events. And we did it as a flashback. We thought, let's, um, Indeed, let's go and do that whole sort of, you know, flashback thing with young Lara. This place gives me the creeps. There were holes in the Lara history that we should never filled. So you saw Lara as a, as a 16 year old where she met this character Von Croy who was her sort of her, her mentor. You must stay close and follow my instruction. That plays a, a fairly big part in Next Generation. Dead or alive, the games keep coming. A new Lara Croft game is announced for November 2002. It's going to be called The Angel of Darkness. It is Lara in a whole new light, in a whole new world. A little darker, a little edgier, a little grittier. She's not uh, your brother's Lara. She's going to be a new Lara with a new look. And she's in a lot of trouble. And uh, you got to help get her out of it. Something happens in the beginning of this game, which suddenly the world is out to get Lara, which is, is totally alien to her. And that means that the situation that she's in, what she has to do, is, is very, very different. People are going to get a much more in-depth look at her personality, actually be able to experience her feelings, her fears, her likes, her dislikes. She'll be vulnerable for the first time. And for the first time, players will feel a special connection with Laura, unlike any before. The Laura that you, know, you play will be potentially different than the Laura that I play, not, not physically in looks, but maybe in, in outfit, but more so in ability. I might be able to run a little bit faster than you so I can get through that door that you can never get to because it closes before you get there, but you might be able to climb better than me so you can shimmy around that corner and drop into that room that I can't get into. So the ponytailed heroine lives on, at least in some sort of alternate universe, and in the hearts of fans worldwide. What does Laura represent? I think somebody that, that really knows her mind. She really has a zest for life. Laura Croft was not only a, a video icon, she was the digital diva and still is for all of computer technology. Even today, we've seen lots of the games come and go. They're always going to be the next sort of Laura Croft replacement. And still today, she, she reigns supreme. She is the industry icon for the next generation of hardware. Just now. Laura Croft is kind of a role model for women out there who find themselves sometimes in, in a male world where they can say, you know what, I, I'm my own woman. I don't need men. I make my own rules. Miss Croft! Give a girl a break.